Mm. You've repeated what I've said for 10 years, it, speaking better English. Mm. And in three years' time, you'll be repeating what it's I'm saying now, because you're all playing catch-up. Okay. I will start this out by saying that this video will certainly be demonetized by YouTube. Although its content is not Islamophobic or bigoted, simply using those words will mean that it will be taken out of circulation. If you like the video, please share it. Well, now that the reporting ban, at least on Tommy Robbins' part, has been lifted, everyone can now be aware of what had happened. Effectively, last year, he was caught videotaping inside a courthouse after being warned not to. He was trying to get video of the defendants of that grooming trial. The judge was concerned that if details about the defendants were released, the lawyers for the defendants could and would seek a mistrial. Tommy's lawyers argued that he had received different information about what was and what was not allowed. The judge did not want to waste all of the time, effort, and money that goes into a trial and sentenced Tommy to three months in jail. She suspended the sentence while making it very clear that what he was doing was wrong and explained why it was wrong. On May 25th, Tommy recorded a couple of the defendants entering the courthouse and was trying to ask them questions. Since there was a reporting ban in place, neither mainstream journalists nor individuals like Tommy Robinson could publish this online. This was the reason for his arrest and sentence. The judge said, I respect everyone's right to free speech. That is one of the most important rights that we have. With those rights come responsibilities. The responsibility to exercise that freedom of speech within the law. I am not sure you appreciate the potential consequence of what you have done. Also important to note was that he pled guilty. Tommy did not choose to dispute the charge. Since the trial he was attempting to report on had retired the jury to contemplate a verdict, part of the reporting ban has been lifted, so journalists are free to report on what had happened. This naturally doesn't speak at all as to whether or not the sentence received is warranted and doesn't take into account Tommy's past or his message. People acting with the best intentions that also give defendants potential reasons to ask for mistrials is not in everyone's best interest. The outcry over Tommy's arrest and sentencing has been loud, and we will have to see whether or not his sentence is reduced or altered over time. One thing that seems clear is that Tommy's message has been embroiled in controversy almost since the outset. He started the English Defense League and left after years of fighting racist elements within the group. He has been both the victim of and perpetrator of violence in some form or another. He has said things that seem to point a guilty finger at groups of people for the actions of individuals. And he has also apologized for this. He has attempted to clarify his intent with his message, while also attempting to provide reasons for why he feels so strongly about what he sees in his hometown of Luton, as well as many other areas of the UK, Europe, Europe, North America, Australia, and elsewhere. Throughout all of this, he has been labeled as far-right, racist, a white supremacist, a bigot, an ethno-nationalist, and worse. The police have raided his home, he has received death threats, and he has vilified the media. For those interested in gathering further information, a Canadian professor, Gad Saad, had a conversation with him that was pretty good. A link to that video is in the description. For me, I believe in free speech, and I think that if Tommy Robinson is allowed to speak, then everyone can see if what he is saying makes sense. We can ask for clarity verification without vilifying him, challenge him, and as a society actually impact and shape his views. If he is a far-right white supremacist, then this will be visible to everyone, and we could see that there is no justification at all to his arguments or concerns. If, however, he brings up valid concerns and issues, then these need to be dealt with and addressed in some way before simply stating he is a white supremacist and needs to be completely disregarded. I have a few clips of an interview from Good Morning Britain. A link to the full interview is in the description. The point I'm trying to show is that some of Tommy's concerns are legitimate, but he is completely discredited and shouted down. If you are on the left, you can perhaps side with Piers Morgan and the points that he is making. Throughout all of this, however, it seems obvious that the point of this interview was to call Tommy out as a way of trying to gain political capital. Do you believe, as you did in 2011, that all Muslims are accountable of course I don't. So do you apologise for what you said? I've already apologised on national right. TV. When I left the English Defence League and joined a Muslim counter-extremism think tank, I said there are 600 Muslims serving in the British Armed Forces who are doing a hell of a lot more than most of us. Yeah? If you attack a Muslim woman walking down the street, you're a coward. Mm. If you attack a mosque, you're a moron. I point out that you should not attack innocent Muslims at every opportunity, right. every single time. I differentiate Muslims from Islam. Right. Okay? But you, what How you don't you do... you differentiate Muslims... Muslims are people. Islam is yeah. an idea. Yeah. Islam but, is an idea. A bad idea. And, it, Islam and is a faith. No, it's an idea. It's faith. a faith. It's an idea that you can change your mind. No, it's a faith. Like it, Christianity. Like Scientology. It's like all faiths. Like it's Scientology. a religion. It's a faith. Like, like Scientology. So, Tommy, it's an idea. if you accept, it's, it's an ideology. if you're saying that the problem is with Islam, yeah. are you accepting that you're Islamophobic? 
Because when, it, there are 100 verses well, just, in this... Yes or no? Okay. Are you Islamophobic? N there's no such word as Islamophobia. I, 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 phobia is an irrational fear. It's not irrational to fear these things. This is from the Disbury Mosque where Salman Abedi went. This is a leaflet. 650,000 of these were given out to British mosques last year. Living in a society in which people have accepted Western lifestyle as their way of life brings immorality at every step. Modesty, shame and honour have no place in Western civilization. These are the views that are being perpetrated. My issue with where you come from on this is driven by the fact that you appear to be an Islamophobe, somebody that is hateful of Islam. You believe that the root cause of all this is Islam, not Islamist terrorists who abuse the Quran and abuse Islam to justify their violence, right? Okay. That's, my, that's my problem okay, okay. with where you come from. Sir William Gladstone held this book above his head in Parliament and he said there will never be peace on this earth so long as we have this book. Do you believe, would you have a ban, like Donald Trump suggested in America, would you have a ban on Muslims entering the country, new Muslims trying to have a home in this country? I believe, I believe we need to protect the British public right now. So what's, what's the answer to the question? British Muslims? Yeah, we need, yeah, the British public. I didn't say British non-Muslim public, right. I said the British public. We've, we've had, we've had what, three... What would you, would you ban... We, we've had Tommy, three you're a straight attacks. talker. Children are being killed. Yes, we all know what's yeah. been happening. Yes, I would. I would stop... You would ban all Muslims? I would temporarily halt Muslim immigration to this country until we get a grip of the problem. Piers Morgan demanding an answer to that question without further discussion shows what is missing in today's discourse. Getting someone to admit that there should be a temporary ban on the immigration of Muslims in order to address and manage some issues is a tactic that allows Pierce to say, so you would ban all Muslims? And just leave it at that. Tommy Robinson is discredited for making an Islamophobic comment. He is caught on camera doing this and that's it. That's the end of the story. The trouble is there are others who also recognize the issues that Tommy Robinson discusses. Others have called attention to the political left with a multicultural agenda that is so open that it is willing to sacrifice the personal freedoms gained in the West in order to keep the multicultural narrative alive. Naturally, Donald Trump is too polarizing a figure to use as an example. He did impose a temporary ban on immigration to the US from certain Muslim-based countries, and the mainstream media exploded with outrage. Let's listen to someone else, from a different country. This is Salim Mansour, an associate political science professor at Western University in Canada, speaking before the Canadian House of Commons. I apologize for the quality of the recording, but this was taken from October of 2012, almost six years ago. In conclusion, I want to emphasize we need to consider lowering the number of immigrants entering into Canada until we've had a serious debate among Canadians on this matter. We should not allow bureaucratic inertia determining not only the policy but the existing level of immigrant numbers and source within origin that Canada brings in annually. We have the precedent of how we selectively close immigration from the Soviet bloc country during the Cold War years, and we need to consider doing the same in terms of immigration from Muslim countries for a period of time given how disruptive the cultural baggage of illiberal values is brought in as a result. We are, in other words, stoking the fuel of much unrest in our country, as we have witnessed of late in Europe. And lest any member wants to instruct me that my views are in any way politically incorrect or worse, I would like members to know that I come before you as a practicing Muslim who know out of experience from the inside how volatile, how disruptive, how violent, how misogynistic is the culture of Islam today and has been during my lifetime and how it greatly threatens our liberal democracy that I cherish since I know what is this opposite? Thank you. Where do you think Pierce would stand on this? Would he refer to Salim Mansour as an insane bigot and Islamophobe? A year earlier, Salim Mansour was speaking about the inherent danger of having a public policy so deeply ingrained with the concept of multiculturalism that the entire idea of liberal democracy is put at risk. Bill of Good that was sold is a delectable lie. Why? And this is so simple, and I don't want to waste, spend too much time on it, because the keystone principle of this argument was, and it went unchallenged, and nobody wants to challenge it today because it's become the, the political consensus of our time, that all cultures are equal. This is the wonderful 1960s idea. All cultures are equal, and all cultures deserve equal respect. And of course, you know it, and I know it, deep down in our heart, Deep down when we question it, deep down when we want to think about this and in the world in that we're living it, that all cultures are not equal. The whole argument, the architecture of this argument 
was not only a flawed argument, but a fallacy, and that's the delectable lie, you know. And if you can measure it up and own it up, and you know, what is the criteria? We, we can set up all sorts of criteria to judge culture, because cultures are not equal. You cannot say that the cultures of the Frank and the Visigoth and the Huns were equal to the culture of the Roman Empire, the mighty Roman Empire, when the Roman Empire was even in its decline. And you can't say the culture of the Taliban is equal to the culture of that people that lands man on the moon and takes sand and turns it into silicon chip. It's an absurd proposition. All cultures are equal. No, for heaven's sake, how can a culture that has a caste system, we're still struggling with caste system in India. How can a culture that engages in misogyny and passes it off as a religious value? That's why our Canadian men and women are dying in, in Afghanistan. How can a culture that denigrates people on the basis of the religious affiliation that they are first class citizen and they are second class citizen be equal to a culture that is based on the principle that is, all men are created equal, not on the basis of ethnicity, not on the basis of religion, on the generic principle that we are all equal. He couldn't go to Oslo to receive the Nobel Prize because he was in the prison. So it was his testimony that was read out. And this is what he has to say. I'll just quote you, you know, a couple of sentences. Freedom of expression is the foundation of human rights, the source of humanity, and the mother of truth. To strangle freedom of speech is to trample on human rights, stifle humanity, and suppress truth. This is the 5,000 year old civilization where one man who stands for freedom of speech is being choked and suffocated. And he has to remind us about freedom, about individual rights, about freedom of speech, which we seem to be so gladly have it forgotten or are trying to forget in chasing this utopian notion, this dystopian notion that multiculturalism is the grand scheme of things that we have discovered. And so we are faced today with an immense totalitarian challenge, the challenge of Islamism. That's the elephant in our room. And no one can talk about it, and no one is willing to talk about it. And then anybody who's going to talk about it is going to be vilified. You will be called bigot. You will be called Islamophobe. There will be names thrown at you. You will be pinned with label. And that is the problematic. You cannot have equality. If you're going to have equality, then the value of Taliban is equal to the value of the graduates of McGill University. And you better treat them as equal. And that's what is happening in, 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 in Toronto. It in, in other places. And as I said, that when you do that, then that is the acid that is flowing into liberal democracy and hollowing out liberal democracy. What, what you're basically saying is that they're demanding liberty to exercise their cultural rights, you know, as a group. Yeah, this is a problematic. And we have to have the confidence and say, you know, that in our public square you cannot do it. We have to have, that is what it comes back to the question that was asked earlier the, uh, of David Cameron's aggressive liberalism. Yes, liberalism is aggressive because it is aggressive in the sense it is defending the individual right to be free. It is not a pious hope and it's not a pious dream and it is going to be under assault and has been under assault throughout the history of mankind, you know, and 20th century was the most graphic illustration of that assault by totalitarian values, you know. So, yes, but in this case, we are opening the door and saying, you know, you can practice your cultural values, whatever they are, in a public square where we value liberal democracy, the values of liberal democracy are the basis of our culture. After all, liberal democracy is a culture. And it is a culture, as I explained, based upon individual rights and freedom. So we have to have the guts and the courage and the tenacity to say, no, it cannot be practiced. 
uh, in, in, in the public square. What you do inside your own chamber is your problem, but in the public square it cannot be practiced no more than you allow us to practice liberal democracy in Saudi Arabia. That's what has to be the argument. It cannot be other way around. This is not to say that the idea of having diversity among cultures is a bad thing, nor is Salim Mansour saying multiculturalism is bad. He is emphasizing the need to manage the integration through the control of numbers. Assimilation takes time, and populations of people who are not open to the concept of liberal democracy will use every advantage to ensure their freedoms are protected, while the entire population base loses the individual freedoms that Western culture was founded upon. Here's a clip from Imam Tawidi. Speaking with Gad Saad, who I had mentioned earlier, Imam Tawidi is an Islamic scholar who not only values Australian culture, but never wants to see another country where an Islamic government is in place. His views on Islam include completely reformative thinking, and as a result, he receives a constant string of death threats. As an imam and as an Islamic scholar, he too believes that the left side of the political spectrum is too open in its thinking. The majority of the death threats he receives are not from the radical element within Islam, but mainstream moderates. But with regards to the hadith, if I open the book, and it's not nothing to do with Shia or Sunni, I open the book and it tells me, as a Muslim, go to a Christian, go to a Jew, and tell him to accept Islam. If they don't accept Islam, kill them. If they accept, still kill them because the Jews and Christians are liars. <laughs> How do I deal with such a book? That is a formula of terrorism, which is why I've used it as a, as a, as a, as a, to put some height for my microphone because it's weak. But yeah, we have formulas of, of terrorism. I had to mention just to explain to the people what's going on here. But... Uh, we have serious books that do not deserve any type of respect. I say 90% of the books of hadith, drop them completely and focus on the minority of hadith that we have that tell us to fast and love for your brother what you love for yourself and the good, the good, the good side of hadith, uh, which actually agrees with logic and, and modern society and and coexisting with other people from other religions, take those hadiths, and even after you've taken them, strictly filter them. I come and now I say, look, I'm a Muslim. You can't label me a bigot. You can't label me a white supremacist. I'm still a Muslim, and I stand for Australian values. But to be honest, it's just about being a good human being before all of this. Religion shouldn't be the priority. Being a human being should be the priority for everything. Once we've established that we're all human beings, then we can go on to taking matters ideologically, and it should always stay at home. The religion should stay at home. I don't want to see an Islamic government again in my life. Get religion out of, out of politics, and just focus on serving the nation. Sadly, too much left in Canada and in Australia. I will end with a clip of Tommy Robinson speaking with Imam Tawidi. A link to the full interview is, of course, in the description. Imam Tawidi fully appreciates that the Quran is filled with calls for violence and believes that the Hadith should not be respected at all. Imam Tawidi doesn't write off Tommy Robinson as a bigot or an Islamophobe, and he understands that there are huge problems within the Islamic faith that have to be addressed. Then we have the non-Muslim community. The non-Muslim community, when they look at me, they say, okay, he's a right wing. There's no such thing as right wing. We're dealing with terrorism. I agree. If you criticize ISIS, it doesn't mean you have a political stance. It means you have a humanitarian stance. You're a human being that is against butchering other human beings. So the left attacked me for a very long time, constantly. Day after day after day, article after interview, or radio, every day I was being attacked in Australia. And then they came the to realize. The left attack you? Yes. The left attack you. you you're, you're a Muslim imam coming out left speaking the, against the terrorism. The left are the, the left. real bigots, not the right. The left are the real racist bigots. It is them. The left, whenever they see a moderate Muslim or a peaceful Muslim who criticizes the majority of texts, they come and they say, oh no, a Muslim can't be like that. A Muslim is like Anton Chaudhry. A real Muslim is like these radicals. So this guy must be a fake. Bash him. 
And what do we do about the radicals? Understand and tolerate them. They are the real bigots who, in their minds, believe that a real Muslim can't be a moderate. And this is what I've first-hand experienced. You've experienced that from the left. I, I call myself a peaceful man. Oh, no, you're criticizing this book that calls for beheading people. So what do you want me to do? I want the Bukhari completely banned from universities. Why should it be used as a source for writing a thesis? Or oh, we have schools across this country that are having these books. Schools, junior yes. schools. Yes. Juniors, children's schools, madrasas. Would you stop madrasas? I stopped going to madrasas from the age of 12. Would you stop madrasas in our country? Of course. You would, of course. First day. First day you'd close down madrasas. I would. Day one. Because, I mean, it's not, nothing's hidden anymore. There have been spy cameras that have gone inside. Yeah, we've seen what they're everything. teaching. They're beating children. It's, there's nothing hidden. And these corruptions, I once upon a time used to teach them. I used to teach them once upon a time. So I know what, what's being taught as well. Okay. Fascinating. Fascinating. My pleasure. I'll ask you again, when you come back to England, will you visit us again? We'll be in the definitely. process of setting up a new show, and I think the British public would like to hear a lot more. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, man. I wish you God luck. Bless I wish you. You Thank you very much. Yeah? Thank you. Thank Cheers, you. Man. Thank you. For me, I think it's too easy to point the finger at terrorists like Piers Morgan would like and say that this is the only issue. The claim that Islam is a religion of peace and both the Quran and Hadith are being completely misinterpreted and used by terrorists is false. Imam Tawidi admits there is a real issue and is trying to be completely open and honest in his discussions about it. For this, he gets death threats from within the Muslim community and vilified in left-leaning media. Dr. Mansour, in trying to speak about the inherent danger of a liberal culture allowing illiberal views to not only be tolerated, but protected and promoted higher than individual freedoms, is silenced using the same tactics. I believe the answer lay in stemming the flow of those that hold anything less than liberal democratic views. It doesn't matter where you come from or what religious belief you hold. If you believe in the implementation of Sharia councils, there is no place for this in a liberal democracy. If you believe that women are not equal to men and believe they should be worth less or beating them is justified, there is no place for this in a liberal democracy. If you believe that religious teachings are more important than secular education or believe that religion should be a consideration for government and public policy, then there is simply no place for this in a liberal democracy. Although Tommy is silenced and Muslims who attempt to speak out in reasonable ways are vilified alongside him, they all have valid concerns and we are all just trying to catch up and start talking about how to find solutions. Let's not consider a ban on Muslims. Let's consider a ban on all those who don't cherish, respect, encourage, and love individual liberty and freedom above all else. That has to begin with absolute equality for all people regardless of their religious belief, their sex, their race, their sexual orientation, and everything else that is innately them. If Muslims are stopped from immigrating to the West as a result of not valuing liberal democracy, it wouldn't be an Islamophobic policy. It would simply value liberal thinking. I doubt, however, that many on the left could really have honest adult conversation about this.